Hello, everybody. Hopefully, you can see me and the notes. Uh, we're going to try to have the notes in the video just so it might be a bit easier for you to follow along with the notes and the video at the same time. So, we're going to start lesson number two today, which is going to be the area of a regular polygon or polygons. So, this corresponds to chapter 4.7 on page 106 in the workbook. Regular polygons. We're going to find it as a shape where all the angles between the sides are equal. So a good example of this is going to be a square. We're going to have four edges and each of the angles on the edge are going to be 90 degrees. Because each side has the same angle or each edge has the same angle, we're going to call this a regular polygon. To find the area, we can break the shape down into triangles. So for each side, we can break it that side down into a triangle. So we do this by first placing a center point on our shape. So here for our square, which I tried to draw a square, I didn't draw it perfectly, but that's okay. Uh, I labeled each side to have a length of two centimeters. That means that my center point, I can use the method where uh, we learned in class, where to find the center point, I'm gonna draw from one corner to the other corner, and then from the other corner down, so from top left corner to bottom right, then top right to bottom left. And then where the lines cross, that's gonna be my center point. So that's why I did in the second square here. And you can see that we get four triangles out of this square. We can also find the center point by doing the math. By saying, okay, if my side length is gonna be two centimeters, halfway in between, I'm one centimeter off from the side. And the same for my top to bottom, if my height of my square is gonna be two centimeters, then my center point is gonna be halfway up. So my center point here is one centimeter from the edge on each edge. So I got my four triangles. And I know that my side length is going to be two centimeters. So my base of my triangle is going to be two centimeters. And then I know that my center point is one centimeter off of my side length. And that's going to correspond to the height of my triangle. So I have four triangles with a base of two centimeters and a height of one centimeter. And the goal is to find the area of this square. So we can break it down into using the formula, the square, or we can find the area of these four triangles. And I just want to clarify, as you have to head, that each of these triangles is going to be equal. For a regular polygon, we're going to get equal triangles. So we only have to do the calculation for one triangle. So we'll start by looking at the area of the four triangles. So we had our total area is going to be four, because we have four triangles multiplied by the area of one triangle, which is the base times the height divided by two. Now our base is going to be two centimeters and our height is going to be one centimeter. So we got one centimeter times two centimeters divided by two, get our area of our triangle. And that's going to mean the area of our triangle is going to be one centimeter squared. Now we have four triangles. So we're going to multiply the area of one triangle by four, giving us four centimeters squared as our area of this square. If we look back over to the left, at the bottom of the page, we get the area of a square. We can use the formula where we have the length times the width. And because each side is just two centimeters, we get that our area is gonna be two centimeters times two centimeters which is going to give us an area of four centimeters squared. And we see that we get the same area for both methods, which is good, which means we're doing the right, we're doing it right. So we can use this method for more complex shapes that aren't as easy as taking the length times the width to find the area. So we move to the next page, I can, perfect. Um, let's look at uh, the area of a hexagon. I was going to do a pentagon, but I drew a hexagon, so 
So for the area of a hexagon, we have six sides on a hexagon, hence the name hex for six. So we're going to have six equal triangles. So for each side, we're going to have another triangle. So the height of the triangles is harder to find for, um, for a shape that has more than four sides. So the height will generally be given to you. If it's not given to you, uh, it will be explained how to find it. So each of these triangles, we're told that we have a base of one inch and a height of 0 0.9 inches. So when we go to solve the area of this hexagon, we can first do our first step in solving the area of a single triangle. So we have a base of one inch, that's our side line, and a height of 0 0.9 inches. We're going to divide that by two. It's just base times height divided by two. So we're going to have one multiplied by 0 0.9 divided by two, and our units are going to be inches squared. We don't want to forget to square our unit there. And doing that calculation, you kind of do in your head um, by doing one times 0 0.9, showing the state 0 0.9 multiplying by one, and then dividing that by two, so cutting it in half. Or you can use a calculator, and we're going to get an area of 0 0.45 inches squared for one of our triangles. So because our hexagon is made up of six of those equal triangles, we can take that area and we're just going to multiply it by six to get our area of a hexagon. So our hexagon area is going to be six times 0 0.59 inches squared. Now, because six is a number that represents like a count, so we're going to have six, we're counting six of these hexagons, it doesn't have a unit on it. So we don't have to worry about our unit changing because it's just like a counting number. So there's no unit associated with it. So doing the calculation here, six times 0 0.49, we're going to get a total area of 2.7 inches squared. So that's going to be it for our hexagon. Another way that we can do this to visualize a bit more, which what we would have done, which is what we would have done if we're in class, is we'd have a hexagon, and we can actually cut it up with scissors to make these four uh, sit equal triangles, and we can put it back together to make sure it works. So if you're feeling like you don't quite see how we can break the shapes down, if you find a piece of paper and cut it into even a square or any number sided shape that has equal angles and cut it up into your triangles and piece it back together to see that it works. So now would be a good time to do that if you want to pause the video and try that. Uh, you definitely don't have to though, it's just if you feel like you want to visualize it a bit more because sometimes these are very hard to visualize when you don't have the shape in front of you. So let's look at our second and last example here. We're going to look at the area of a pentagon. Each side has a length of 2.3 meters, and the height of each triangle is 0 0.9 meters. Also, uh, sorry about my poorly drawn pentagon here. Um, I did my best. So just like we did with our hexagon, we're going to first solve our area for one triangle. One thing I also did here that uh, I find is a bit easier so I can visualize what's going on is I took my written the question where each side is the length of 1.3 meters and the height of each triangle is 0 0.9 meters. And I wrote it out as B equals 1.3 meters and H equals 0 0.9 meters. So this way I'm not trying to look through the words to figure out what's important or what information I need to put in. I wrote that down so when I write into my formula, base times height divided by two, I can replace, okay, B is 1.3 and H is 0 0.9. And so that's what we did in our area of one triangle. We got 1.3 times 0 0.9 meters divided by two. And using a calculator, if you want, we're gonna get a total area for one triangle of 0 0.59 meters squared. So because we have a pentagon, we have five side lengths, we're gonna have five triangles. So our total area of our pentagon is gonna be five times 0 0.59 meters squared. And that's going to give us a total area of 2.95 meters squared. So that brings us to the end of our notes on 
chapter 4.7. Um, there's problems you complete, uh, questions one to four on page 108. Uh, there will also be an assignment where it has those questions on Google Classroom for you to complete. So if you can complete them in your workbook and then post a picture of that work, you can also, if your workbook is full, you can do it in a Google Doc if you are able to uh, use math functions in there, uh, or you can just do it on a piece of paper and upload that as well. Hope everybody had a great day. And uh, see you all on Thursday for the video call if you have any questions.